Get excited, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about the skin benefits of vitamin E. If you look at the ingredients on like your serums, moisturizers, toners, you probably see the ingredient vitamin E and maybe you've been wondering, what does it even do for the skin? We're gonna cover that as well as vitamin E supplements in this video, but before getting into it, make sure you're subscribed. If you like getting skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, go ahead and hit that little bell icon because that's gonna turn your notifications on so that YouTube lets you know as soon as my videos go live, that way you don't miss out on anything. Back in 1969, the FDA finally recognized vitamin E, otherwise known as tocopherol, as an essential nutrient. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin, but the term vitamin E, it actually encompasses eight different compounds. Now, we naturally get vitamin E from many of the foods that we eat in our diet, like nuts, vegetable oils, and leafy greens. Vitamin E deficiency is actually very, very rare. You only see it in a few conditions, like people who have problems absorbing fat-soluble vitamins, people who have an underlying genetic deficiency and things that are necessary to absorb vitamin E and in very low birth weight infants. Vitamin E is most well known for its role in protecting the viability of our cell membranes. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are major components of cell membranes and they undergo lipid peroxidation upon exposure to free radicals. Talking about the skin, this is kind of a major inciting factor for some of the cascade events that lead to premature skin aging, sun damage, even setting the stage for skin cancer formation. Now vitamin E, it's incorporated into our cell membranes and it works there as an antioxidant, halting lipid peroxidation by donating a hydrogen molecule. Now in order for vitamin E to continue to act as an antioxidant, to continue to protect the cell membranes, it needs somebody to come in and regenerate it. Who does that? a few compounds that are naturally present in our skin, namely ascorbic acid, otherwise known as vitamin C, as well as glutathione. Ascorbic acid and glutathione are essential for vitamin E to have sustained action because they donate a hydrogen group once Vitamin E, otherwise known as tocopherol, gives that hydrogen group up to protect your lipids. So everybody is working together to fight off free radicals. Selenium is also very important in the regeneration of vitamin E, so much so that in individuals who have selenium deficiency, they present with many of the same signs and symptoms of vitamin E deficiency because basically they are unable to regenerate vitamin E. In dermatology, vitamin E has been suggested as a treatment for a variety of skin conditions, including melasma, scars, and something called yellow nail syndrome. But unfortunately, definitive studies are seriously lacking to actually suggest vitamin E as a treatment for really anything. Now, we know that vitamin E, it's, it's really critical for protecting the health of the lipid membranes that surround our cells, including the cells that make up our skin. Because vitamin E is an antioxidant, really where it shines, if you will, in the skin is in protecting our skin from damage from ultraviolet radiation. Vitamin E in our skin, it's important in skin aging, not only for defending against free radicals that are generated upon exposure to UV, but it actually protects our collagen. Vitamin E helps reduce expression of something called matrix metalloproteinase. These are enzymes that chew up our collagen and compromise the integrity of the deeper layers of our skin. Matrix metalloproteinase enzymes, they get, they get expressed, elevated, when we are exposed to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation. But with age, their expression is also increased and that is you know, part and parcel of the aging process. Vitamin E may help protect and that when applied to the skin, vitamin E helps kind of calm down that overexpression of matrix metalloproteinase enzymes that would otherwise destroy dermal integrity. Unfortunately, the function of vitamin E in the skin, not only is it dependent on being regenerated by things like ascorbic acid, glutathione, and selenium, but its ability to help our skin out is only as good as the levels of vitamin E are adequate. And vitamin E in our skin, it gets depleted upon exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation. I mean, radi irradiate the skin, go out in the sun, vitamin E levels in the skin, they're going to decline. With age, vitamin E, of course, is going to decline in the skin. And if you smoke, that seriously lowers the, the levels of vitamin E in your skin. Probably a major reason why people who smoke have accelerated onset of the visible signs of skin aging. They have more sallow skin, prominent wrinkles, because basically they are just 
wiping out their antioxidant system in the skin. Not only can it not handle the free radical generation upon exposure to day-to-day -day stressors like UV, but they're constantly bombarding their skin with insults from the tobacco smoke that further drives accelerated skin aging. They don't have the antioxidant system in place robustly enough to ward off against that because it's being depleted, including levels of vitamin E. While it is clear that vitamin E is essential for the health of our skin, I wanna emphasize that good quality research trials, clinical trials on actual people, they are seriously lacking to not only suggest vitamin E supplementation by mouth as a treatment for, well, anything, let alone an anti-aging effect, but we also lack sufficient data to really answer the question about applying it to the skin for any potential skin benefit. Research that we do have shows that by pre-treating the skin of patients who are about to undergo a type of phototherapy known as PUVA, where basically we expose the skin to UVA rays, which as a reminder are the rays from the sun that chew up our collagen, but in restricted doses, it can be used to treat some dermatologic conditions, but does come with a risk of skin cancers and sun and skin damage long-term. So there, there have been studies where they put vitamin E on the skin prior to PUVA treatment, and patients who receive the vitamin E applied to the skin, they have less overall redness. Pre-treatment of the skin and prior to UV radiation has also been shown to inhibit the expression of something called human macrophage metalloelastase. This is an enzyme that gets upregulated, meaning higher levels of it when we're exposed to the sun. It's upregulated in areas of the skin that are chronically exposed to UV, and that enzyme chews up elastin. So we always talk about collagen, but let's not forget elastin. That's what gives the skin snap and recoil. Both collagen, which gives the skin firmness, and elastin, they decline with age and UV exposure. So there's some research showing that when you apply vitamin E to the skin, likely because of its antioxidant effects, it can put the brakes on destruction of not only collagen, but elastin. But these are short-term studies. They're done in a select population of patients. They're very small. We don't really have good long-term studies on what the impact of applying vitamin E to the skin is on the trajectory of photoaging. What about taking vitamin E by mouth? So two studies have looked at the combination of oral vitamin E and oral vitamin C for either eight days in one study or 50 days in another study. And both studies showed that the combination of supplementing with vitamin C plus vitamin E raised the minimal erythematous dose. What the heck is that? The minimal erythematous dose is the dose of UV that is required to begin to barely noticeably damage your skin. So by raising the minimal erythematous dose, effectively this combination basically made these individual skin a little bit more hardy, if you will, against the damaging effects of UV exposure. Taking vitamin E alone or vitamin C alone did not have this effect, suggesting that you need both together. But I want to emphasize that these studies maximum were 50 days. We don't have the good long-term studies to really say for sure what impact this has on the trajectory of skin aging. And you may say, why not? I mean, what harm is there? Vitamin E, whether it be applying it to the skin or taking it by mouth, it's not without the potential for harm. It's become clear over the years that supplementing with high dose vitamin E can actually be pretty harmful because it can interfere with how your platelets aggregate properly. Platelets are the part of the blood necessary for blood clotting. So it can increase bleeding risk. This is especially important if you undergo surgery. Uh, because you know you may be at uh, excessive risk for bleeding, and it's especially important if you're taking other medications that interfere with platelet aggregation. Not only that, vitamin E can actually interact with some of your other medications. Always be sure and tell your doctor, your healthcare provider, all of the supplements that you are taking because they do have the risk of interacting with other medications that you may be taking. Some research even suggests that there is an increased risk in the skin cancer basal cell carcinoma with supplementing with vitamin E. Other research actually shows an increase in mortality, aka death, in some individuals who are on 
vitamin E supplementation. We don't have a lot of research on it, truthfully, to really get at the nitty gritty details. What is the form of vitamin E? What's the safest? What's the best? What's gonna be absorbed optimally? And in terms of the skin, if you're taking a supplement, what's the best form and dosage that you actually get adequate levels in the skin? These are our questions that we don't really have good answers for. What about just applying vitamin E to the skin? I mean, you'll find vitamin E in a lot of skincare. If you go online, you will see people seeing the of taking a vitamin E capsule and popping it open and smearing it on the skin. I suspect a lot of the benefit these people are deriving from this is that vitamin E capsules, they the, the con contents of them are moisturizing. It's a fat soluble vitamin. It's in an oily base that is moisturizing, lubricating for the skin surface. But it is not without harm. Research actually shows that applying vitamin E to the skin it can lead to a contact dermatitis. Of course, you can develop a contact dermatitis to anything you put on the skin, but it seems to be appearing at a pretty high rate in these studies that look at the benefit of applying it to the skin, specifically in the setting of wound healing and scarring. One study showed that roughly a third, I believe, of patients applying vitamin E to the skin, they actually developed a contact dermatitis, and ultimately, that can end up worsening the appearance of a scar. And importantly, that study didn't show any benefit of applying vitamin E in terms of healing or the improvement of the appearance of a scar. Of course, what you are gonna find in skincare products, uh, tocopherol and skincare products as an ingredient, vitamin E, um, Presumably, it is at a much lower level, probably safer on the skin, although of course you can develop a contact dermatitis to it, but it is a pretty popular ingredient in skincare products and it may have benefit to your skin, provided you tolerate it in your skincare products. If you are allergic to it, then of course you have to avoid it. Vitamin E as an ingredient in skincare products, because it's an antioxidant, you know, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but perhaps it helps with stabilizing the ingredients in the product, especially if it is used alongside other antioxidants. You guys know from my videos that vitamin C applied to the skin has a lot of potential benefits, but it has the limitations of poor stability. And it's thought that the combination of vitamin C and vitamin E, they help stabilize one another. Uh, vitamin E helps vitamin C be, remain stable, and vitamin C helps protect vitamin E from UVA-mediated degradation. And vitamin C, otherwise known as ascorbic acid, it's necessary for replenishing vitamin E. So they really are a synergistic pairing. Arguably, if you wanted to derive the benefits of vitamin E in your skincare, it would at least be paired with ascorbic acid but the ascorbic acid has to be formulated in such a way that it's stable. Ascorbic acid has stability issues. All that to say, vitamin E, it's an antioxidant. It certainly can have a lot of benefits for your skin, but I caution you against going out to the store, popping open in a vitamin E capsule and smearing it all over your skin. As it stands now, that really just appears to increase the risk of contact dermatitis. There's insufficient data to show that it has any benefit to the skin other than it's lubricating and moisturizing properties, which you can get from a basic moisturizer. As far as taking vitamin E supplements by mouth, I strongly caution you to clear that with your healthcare provider due to the potential risks of bleeding, interaction with other medications. We really just don't have a long-term safety data and we have some preliminary data to suggest that it could actually be harmful for some folks. So proceed with caution, just because vitamin E sounds natural, doesn't mean it's safe, doesn't mean it's effective, doesn't mean that what you're buying in the store is necessarily gonna be the right form to yield any benefit to the skin. That is a area where we just don't have answers. What is the best form that's gonna penetrate the skin optimally and be bioavailable to actually help protect those cell membranes? So long as you are not in the rare minority of people who have difficulty absorbing fat-soluble vitamins, um, and that would be people who have underlying pancreatic disorders or somebody with the hereditary condition cystic fibrosis, provided you're not one of those folks um, or you know a low birth weight infant or somebody with one of these rare genetic conditions where you lack the ability to properly uh, process vitamin E and take it up, well, you likely can get more than adequate levels of vitamin E for the body, for health, from your diet. The other benefit of getting your vitamin E from your diet and not from a supplement is that 
it's likely going to, a balanced diet is going to provide you with the other things necessary in order for vitamin E to properly yield benefit to your body. Things like selenium. All right, y'all, that's what I can tell you about vitamin E for the skin. I have a lot of videos on my channel if you weren't aware about different micronutrients and how they play a role in skin health how they play a role when applied to the skin and skin health. So on the end slate, I'm going to link one of my more recent uh, vitamin videos <laughs> if you wanna check that out. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.